Ever wanted to kill every endgame boss with a single button press? A cascade of pain. Oh. This Ignite Discharge Elementalist is your one-way ticket to Boomville, so hop on and let's get to it. Welcome, it's your friendly neighbourhood Badger here and I'm back for the hotly requested pardon the pun, Discharge Ignite Elementalist. Honestly, this build is the most enjoyable build I have played for a very long time, and has completely decimated the entirety of the endgame in the Echoes of the Atlas expansion, and can be done so on a pretty tight budget. Below, the gameplay you see is from a couple of T16 maps on the endgame gear version of this character, but don't worry, the budget version of this one can do this content too, just a tad slower. Discharge revolves around gaining charges, endurance, frenzy, and power, and then consumes them to deal massive single hit damage. However, to scale this build, we go into full Ignite DPS, relying on the Elementalist's Shaper of Flames ascendancy point to make all three damage types from our charges work together to apply one big Ignite. The synergy here is immense, as we need to wait to generate charges for discharge over time, but with a big, long and destructive ignite ticking away as we do so, we can focus on dodging. In the current market values, the budget version can be made on less than an Exalted Orb's worth of currency, only requiring a Vol's Devotion Amulet and a Ramirez Banquet Ring. If you're looking for a build that can stand still and wipe out all endgame boss content, this is the build for you. And let's face it, we've seen enough Bladeful Blade Blast and BV characters, haven't we? Below, you'll find the ever handy color bar to jump to any section you need to. And remember, all Path of Building links are down below, both the budget version and the endgame version, so please follow along. If you are a fan of this build, consider popping a quick subscribe down below to the channel. It's a one button click and it goes a lot further than you would think. And lastly, a little note about the hardcore viability of this build. The version I am mainly showcasing here is a softcore version, but I will talk quickly over some options you can take to turn this build into a hardcore viable version during the gear sections. Alright, let's get into it. First of all, we're going to talk about the playstyle of this build. There's two very similar playstyles, and they both uh, work very similar to each other. But first of all, we're going to talk about the budget playstyle, and then very quickly talk about the endgame playstyle as well, because the mechanics are slightly different in how we gain our charges to use our discharge. So first of all, on the budget version, you can see here we're just using a tabula rasa, a searing touch. And the main two items that uh, generate our charges are our Ramirez Banquet, and Evolves Devotion. Ramirez Banquet gains us a power charge every time that we don't deal a critical strike, every time we deal a non-critical strike, and loses those power charges when we do gain a critical strike. Uh, now, we're ho hopefully not going to be applying many critical strikes, and we apply all of this with our Stormbrand. Now, Stormbrand helps us not crit uh, as we're gaining those charges. It also helps us apply Elemental Equilibrium by hitting with Lightning Damage, and it also helps us apply Elemental uh, Overload you know, every time we uh, do crit on those uh, very small amounts. So all of this synergy works together with Stormbrand and Ramirez Banquet. Now to gain our Endurance Charges, uh, basically we use Vol's Devotion. Now Vol's Devotion is only about 10 Chaos, so it's very cheap as well. And you gain an Endurance Charge when you lose a Power Charge. So what happens there is either through using Discharge or Ramirez Banquet, when we lose our Power Charges, we gain our Endurance Charges. Is uh, very interesting uh, with that whole mechanic there. Um, so I can put that all on there like that, and both of our power charges and our endurance charges, and we're using, using the endgame version, our frenzy charges as well, they all apply damage to ignites because of the uh, Shaper of Flames node on the Elementalist. So your hits always ignite, and all damage with hits can ignite. Instead of just fire damage being able to ignite, all damage does ignite there. So what we're going to do now on this budget version, obviously, not the full budget version, because we've still got some pretty insane uh, boots, gloves, and helmet right here. So, you know, this is kind of, I would say, an in-between uh, version of the damage you're going to see on the budget version to the end-game version. So it's a good way of showing uh, the in-between. But we will do a Tier 16 Lair of the Hydra map here, so I can really show you how this does work. Now, it is a rare version as well. Uh, and because I'm kind of on the budget version with a uh, tabula rasa and that sort of thing, there's you know there's a chance I might die here, uh, but it will very much showcase uh, this build to you, albeit in the soft core version. So let's jump in, and I'll just keep out how this is work. Uh, so as I said, we're just mainly going to be using Stormbrand and discharging through 
map. So let's just jump right into it. So we jump into this map here, we apply our Stormbrand, as you can see here we gain some power charges, when we lose those power charges we gain endurance charges, and then we can just discharge there. And that's pretty much how it goes, you place your Stormbrand down, and then you do a discharge. Uh, now we do have less area of effect on uh, the map mods in this map, so uh, we normally would be applying, oops, a bit of a desync there, normally would be applying a larger discharge, uh, but we can also showcase that on the, uh, on the end game version of the build as well. So let's just rush to the boss, and I'll see how much damage we can do to the boss uh, in this uh, end game version as well here. Load right there. So that's pretty much the gameplay. Alright, just to save a bit of time, I thought I would just zip forward to the boss fight here so you can see us fight this Hydra. So we're going to do about half the Hydra's health, uh, maybe 75% maybe of the Hydra's health on the budget version, then I'm going to portal out, and then we're going to do it on the end game version so you can just see the last little bit of burst there as well. So let's just jump into Hydra here. I'm going to put a portal down on the inside. Uh, and basically, uh, same thing with the bosses, we're just going to put Stormbrand on, and then we're going to Wave of Conviction, and then do our Discharge there as well. Jump over here. Dawn brand happening right there, wave of conviction, and then discharge there. So even on this kind of semi-budget version, you can see one discharge is about half the health. We'll do one more discharge on this budget version, then we'll jump out, and I'll show you the end game version as well. Uh, that one there, discharge. Now we will see, uh, there we go, we've got two guardians in here now, because I've got that special node on the uh, Uncharted Realms. Let's jump out, and I'll show you the end game version. For the end game version, we're using a pretty insane crafted staff and a Farrell's fur. Now to run over the Farrell's Fur mechanics as I socket in all of these gems here, what Farrell's Fur does is it lets you rotate uh, between Cat's Agility and Cat's Stealth, and every time you do a full rotation of those two, uh, uh, those two aspect uh, graphs, I guess you could say, aspect skills from the aspect of the cat, you gain up to your maximum number of power and frenzy charges. So putting this all on and then activating, um, uh, activating aspect of the cat here, you can see uh, that uh, Cat Stealth, Cat's Agility, they keep rotating, and we're gaining up to our full power charges and full frenzy charges there. Now one very important thing to note, I'll talk about this again in the uh, build section, or the build gear section, is uh, you really, really want, in wherever you've got Aspect of the Cat crafted, you really want less duration and swift affliction in the sockets of that. So put Aspect of the Cat either on your boots, helmet, or gloves, and then, uh, then you can put less duration and swift affliction in there as well. Uh, otherwise, the rotation is going to be a lot longer, as you can see here. Rotation is around about 8 seconds, 7 seconds. We put these ones in here. We can see the rotation goes down to 3, uh, just uh, under 3 seconds, actually, which is pretty insane. Uh, so that's pretty much how that all goes. Now uh, we can go in and we can see the damage that we can get. Uh, and the much more area that we can get on this version of the build, as you can see here. Uh, that's pretty darn insane, that area right there. I will also switch my extra uh, extra ring in there so we get up to our nine endurance charges. So let's jump in and let's see how much damage we can do in one discharge to both of these bosses here. All right. But first of all, we're going to try Chimera here. Uh, <laughs> apparently, we're just going to get one shot. Uh, as I said, this is a soft core build. I'm going to keep that in. I'm going to keep that in because, you know, why not? Uh, we did get hit by Hydra pretty hard. Uh, but let's just uh, figure this out again here. And Discharge, as you can see here. Damage, chunking it down. Uh, we didn't quite get all the health, but let's just try again there. There we go. And let's try, see if we can get a Hydra one-shot. Right. Bonk. Right there, Hydra one-shot. Which is pretty darn insane. Uh, yes, so apart from that little death, as you can see, it is definitely a softcore build. It can be built hardcore, and we will talk about that next. But that is the gameplay aspects of this build. If you've got any questions, you can comment down below. But I would say, keep listening through everything, uh, and uh, follow the gear, follow the passive skill trees, and we'll go over everything. Let's jump to it. Alright, down to the nitty gritty of the budget, gear, and links. So we are starting with the budget version, and first of all, the gear. As I said, there's only a couple of uniques that are mandatory to get this build actually rolling. But I will talk about one little thing that you can do. Uh, to change it up if you would like to. So as I said, Vol's Devotion as an amulet and Ramirez Banquet as a ring uh, are basically all you do need. At the time of recording, now this may go up, but at the time of recording, Vol's Devotion is only 10 Chaos and Ramirez Banquet is 1 Chaos. I don't think the ring will uh, rise at all, but the amulet might depending on how much traction this build does get. So that's basically the only needed thing about the build. 
However, uh, if you do wanna do things a little bit differently and make it a little bit more hardcore viable, you can actually change the Vols Devotion amulet to instead use um, the uh, Red Blade Banner. Uh, shield is what you're gonna be doing here. So Red Blade Banner is obviously a shield. You're gonna be getting more life. You're gonna be getting block chance, but you are going to be losing that Searing Touch slot or a Staff slot and only going to be able to use a Rare Scepter or something like that. Maybe with plus one fire, fire damage uh, over time multiplier, that sort of thing. But a Red Blade Banner is a great way to uh, switch this in. What this is actually going to do is give your War Cries infinite power. And this means that every time that you use Enduring Cry on this build, which the budget version uses, you'll get your maximum endurance charges. Uh, so that's basically it right there. I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but it is a version of the build you can use. So Vol's Devotion, Ramirez Banquet, extremely easy to obtain in, in Trade League. Might be a little bit harder in SSF to get a, a Vol's Devotion. So in SSF, you can go with the Red Blade Banner version and it's a lot easier to play. Uh, now, Searing Touch is probably best in slot as a budget item on this build. So Searing Touch is gonna be giving us quite a lot of damage. It basically gives plus two to level of all fire spell skill gems, fire damage, fire damage over time multi. These are all really good stats for the build and the cast speed just allows you to get that discharge out a little bit quicker. But pretty much all of the gear, so the helmet, body armor, gloves, boots, ring, uh, extra ring and belt, it's just life and resistances. Uh, maybe getting some uh, dexterity to cap out your dexterity here on maybe your ring, your belt, uh, maybe even your gloves as well. But you really wanna make sure that your dexterity is filled out. That's the only one that's uh, hard to, you know, fully fill out properly on the build. And jewels themselves, the jewels are looking pretty simple on the budget version. You're just gonna be looking for increased life and burning damage. You can also look for fire damage. You can look for fire damage over time multiplier, but just the two stat jewel is still gonna give you quite a lot of life and damage on the build. Lastly, flasks. We're looking for damage at an Aziri's Promise. Uh, now, usually on a build like this, uh, especially an Ignite build, you don't really need that Chaos Damage because that's not going to be able to Ignite. But with Elementalist, we can Ignite, which is really, really great. So Xeri's Promise, as you can see here, is giving us 13% more damage. I'm using a Searing Divine Life Flask of Staunching, so an Instant Life Flask to get rid of Bleeding as well, a Granite Flask of Warding to remove Curses, and a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. You don't need anything to do with Elemental uh, Immunity because that's all granted through the Elementalist Ascendancy itself. And I've actually left the last Flask slot uh, completely uh, open because that's just up to you. Some people like to use uh, Basalt Flasks, some people like to use Onslaught Flasks, uh, which are the Silver Flasks, but that's very much up to you which you would like to include in there. As you can see, the Ignite DPS is closing in on 1.7 million. That's the actual DPS, but it lasts for a total of 11 million DPS right there. Uh, and that's with the budget tree, that's with the budget skills and links and everything like that as well, which you'll see uh, the tree in a little bit of time. You can jump down below if you'd like to. But now that we've talked about the gear, we're going to talk about the skills themselves. So first of all, we do have our Discharge. Obviously, Discharge is the main skill uh, and the main damage that we are getting here from this. In the leveling section, I will talk about using Armageddon Brand before you start using Discharge. Armageddon Brand and Divine Isle, uh, they're kind of great leveling tools, but basically when you get your, your ring and your amulet, you can switch to Discharge and deal insane amounts of damage. So in this order, Discharge is linked to Burning Damage, Ignite Proliferation, Deadly Ailments, as a fifth link, you're using Unbound Elements, and if you do have a sixth link, whether you're using a Tabula Rasa or anything like that, you can use Swift Affliction in there as well. Now, as you can see, we're still over 1 million Ignite DPS on a five link in this build, which is pretty darn tasty, may I say. And so we'll tick the Swift Affliction back on there. For our Power Charge generation, we're just using Stormbrand and Controlled Destruction, and I also put our Malevolence Curse in there as well. You will notice over here that it says that Malevolence, because we are using, just very quickly, because on the tree that we are using, uh, it does say it right down here, we're using Blood Magic and Mortal Conviction. Uh, Mortal Conviction means that uh, you can use one aura and it doesn't reserve life. Although you will see over here, this is red, so it means it's not actually applying properly. Don't worry about this unreserved life. You're not going to be reserving any life whatsoever. It's totally fine. Uh, so that's our aura that we're gonna be using is Malevolence. Uh, in, you know, another four socket, we're just going to be using all four golems. Flame golem, stone golem, chaos golem, and lightning golem. And you can summon one each of these. This is just going to give you good uh, physical damage mitigation. 
gonna give you good life regeneration, good cast speed, attack speed, and good overall flat damage as well, which is really nice. Moving on, we've got our Wave of Conviction set up, which is Wave of Conviction and Combustion. Combustion is applying the uh, debuff to the enemy's resistances, and some more debuffs to the resistances with Hextouch flammability there as well. So one cast on the boss, and then continue to get your Elemental Equilibrium up with Stormbrand, and that's just going to mean you have crazy good damage. And lastly, the movement. I choose to use Flame Dash, linked with Second Wind. Uh, and Second Wind also applies to Enduring Cry and Increased Duration. On the budget version of this build, we do have Instant War Cries, so you're just going to want to put Enduring Cry on your left click, and just as you're moving around, that's just going to auto-proc every time it's up, which is really good. It also helps with Endurance Charge Generation as you're going through all of that as well. So that is the budget gear and links. We're now going to move on to the end game gear and links. Remember, all of the pace spins are down below. I'm splitting the budget and the end game version into two different pace spins. You can have a look down below, uh, but let's move on to the end game version, shall we? Now it's time for us to talk about the end game version of this character, which is let's say gonna be a little bit more expensive. Now I have a lot to talk about here, I'm gonna try and get through it quickly, uh, but I'll talk about what is the most important stuff first for the end game version, and then talk about the add-ons that you can make. Now there are also cluster jewels that you can use for this build, uh, but I am also gonna be including a one cluster jewel uh, tree and a two cluster jewel tree, uh, two, like one large cluster jewel and two large cluster jewel tree uh, for this character, which you'll see in the passive skill tree section. Uh, now, we're going to start with, obviously, the most important part, which I did talk about in the playstyle version, which is Farrell's Fur. Now, the Farrell's Fur chest piece is where you start uh, becoming a, a, an endgame version of the build, from a budget to an endgame, because this is a very expensive chest piece. Farrell's Fur is going to allow you, as I said, to get that cat's uh, stealth and cat's agility uh, switch around, and then gain your frenzy and power charges when you gain cat's stealth. Um, and uh, that coupled with having uh, swift affliction and less duration in the links of your aspect of the cat is going to mean that you can generate your charges very quickly. We're still using Vol's Devotion here. Uh, so these are the two most important parts about the build, a Feral Sphere and Vol's Devotion. And then we'll go over everything else to really show you how it all looks. Now you can see over here the Ignite DPS is closing in on 20 million. This is not fudged. All of this right here is just imported straight from in-game. I just basically went to import build. I imported my Badger is Blind character, items and skills successfully imported. I ticked all the calculations and configurations needed uh, to really show all of this. Uh, all of the damage, the power, frenzy, and endurance, and all of this stuff over here. Uh, but this is, not, uh, this is not fake damage. This is real Ignite damage right here. And the total Ignite DPS, about 64 million, uh, which is pretty insane. So we're going to start with probably the first upgrade that you will want to make to this build, which is a Potentiality Rod. Uh, now, a Potentiality Rod gives you, on an implicit, max power charge and max endurance charges. I'm not going to talk about how to craft this, because I've already done a full video on how to craft a staff like this one in the description down below. You can definitely go check that out. But that's a really, really good upgrade to a Searing Touch. For the helmet, uh, it's another crazy crafted uh, helmet right here. Uh, which is basically ignites dealing damage faster, nearby enemies having uh, negative fire resistance, plus one max power charge, and uh, physical damage from hits taken as fire damage, with a little bit of life as well there. There's still a little bit there that I can do there to make the life better, but that's a very, very amazing helmet there. You can come ask me on stream how to craft a helmet like this. Once again, it's going to take me about five minutes to get through, uh, you know, how to actually craft this, maybe even more, five to ten minutes, so I'm not going to do that right now because the video is just going to be too long. Uh, but basically it involves using uh, Awakener's Orbs and Maven's Orbs uh, together to get a, a circlet like this here as well. This is giving us a ton of damage, as you can see, if we take this off and then put it back on, around about 16.5% damage as we put that one on there, right there. The Dragon Mitts themselves, which are the gloves, uh, we're looking at just Awaken Orbing, Fire Damage Over Time Multiplier, and plus one Maximum Frenzy Charges together and then crafting Aspect of the Cat onto the gloves. I figured that uh, the gloves are the best spot to put the Aspect of the Cat because uh, it's a suffix, and everything else uh, on this build uh, really needs those suffixes. Uh, the boots themselves, uh, I got pretty lucky on these boots here as well. These are maven uh elevated version of the Ignite Stealing Damage Faster and Ignite Duration. Uh, Awaken Orb together with Endurance Charges, and then we got Fire, Chaos Res, and T1 Max Life. 
and then crafted move speed on there as well because by golly is it hard to get uh, uh crafted speed modifiers from harvest this league uh, as you can see so far harvest really is the uh, name of the game in all of this now the last three items that i'm going to talk about are actually items that are not fully end game yet uh but i still need to craft them but honestly, if you're hitting 20 million Ignite DPS on a build, do you really need anything more on the build? Uh, so first of all, I bought this two stone ring with plus one maximum endurance charge synthesized for one, uh, uh, sorry, not one, for 30 chaos. Now this was a steal. It should have been around about three to four exalted orbs, but this is uh, very important right here. Uh, now the second ring is just a ring to cap our uh, dexterity, life, and resistances. That's all that is right there. And the same with the belt; it's just giving us life and resistances. And then a jewel at the end here to give us phasing for four seconds on kill, which is pretty nice. It'd be also nice to have our onslaught on here as well, but we get a little bit of max life there as well. The flasks are the same as the budget version, uh, apart from using a Cinder Swallow Urn in the last slot. Cinder Swallow Urn is just going to give us about 10% more damage as well right there, which is very, very nice. Uh, and that is all of that there. And last of all, we're going to talk about uh, the Cluster Jewels themselves. So the Cluster Jewels, we're going to start with the large Cluster Jewels. Now these large Cluster Jewels aren't perfect. All I'm looking for is Burning Bright and then some other uh, modifier, usually a suffix modifier on there as well. So Burning Bright is in the uh, in the, the front slot right here, as you can see here. Burning Bright hitting right here. And then uh, we could still craft an extra thing in here, but I just haven't really been bothered to yet. That's pretty much how both of the large ones are looking. And the medium ones, you're looking at three of them that are Blowback and Burning Bright. Uh, three, uh, Blowback and Burning Bright, and then one of them, which is, uh, where's the other one? Uh, it should have, uh, Blowback, Burning Bright, there it is again, uh, Blowback and Fan the Flames, or Burning Bright and Fan the Flames. Now, Fan the Flames is just gonna mean that our Ignites spread to other enemies, uh, giving us better clear when you use your Discharge. Uh, so that's all you're really looking for in there. I'll talk about the rest of the unique jewels in the passive skill tree section. There's one last thing that I will mention just about uh, this build in general. Uh, it's a very important thing. Uh, as we can see here in our configuration, we've got power charges and endurance charges. Because of the way of how Vol's Devotion works, when we use our power charges, we then get that many endurance charges. If your endurance charges are higher than your power charges, you're still never going to reach your maximum endurance charges because you consume nine power charges here. Uh, so say for example, I had a maximum of 10 endurance charges. If I consumed nine power charges, I would only get nine endurance charges. So really pay attention to both of these are being uh, equal or the power charge being one above uh, is pretty important there as well. Uh, so just really make sure that your endurance charges aren't above your power charges. That's all I will say in crafting all of your gear and, and uh, getting this build online. Oops, I did forget about the links. I forgot about the links uh, for this character. Uh, so right before we jump ahead, uh, we're going to go into the skills for the end game version. So first of all, we'll talk about Discharge. Now Discharge basically is uh, uh, juiced up pretty heavily with Awakened Gems because four Awakened Gems can be used with Discharge. So Awakened Deadly Elements, Awakened Swift Affliction, Awakened Unbound Elements, and Awakened Burning Damage can all be used with our Discharge setup. And then obviously using Ignite Proliferation there as well. It's very tasty. Now in our gloves, remember we've got Aspect of the Cat in our gloves. So we do want that less duration and swift affliction there. If you can afford a second awakened swift affliction, you do put that in here because it basically means uh, you get uh, from 15% reduced duration of supported skills on the normal one, it goes up to 25%. So you get it even quicker on rotation. And then we just got Stormbrand to proc out Elemental Equilibrium and Elemental Overload. And uh, Flame Golem there as well uh, is one of the golems. Uh, and then we've got our Movement and Steel Skin. So uh, instead of using Enduring Cry on this build, I, st I decided to use Steel Skin uh, because there's a few reasons for that, but basically on the end game version, it's a bit harder to get those instant war cries. So you're using Steel Skin instead on your left click. Look with Second Wind, increased duration, and your Flame Dash there as well. Uh, we then have our Wave of Conviction Curse setup. It's exactly the same as the uh, um, as the budget version. That's pretty much uh, you know applying Wave of Conviction, Combustion, Flammability. We've then got the rest of our golems plus malevolence in our boots uh, and that's 
all of our links basically. So it's very similar apart from just using Awaken Gems and making sure that you do have that less duration as Swift Affliction in whatever item has your aspect in it. This is vitally important, otherwise the build is gonna feel quite trash. Okay, now we can move on to the passive skill trees. Let's do it. Alrighty, time for us to talk about the passive skill tree. So we're gonna start with the budget version. Uh, which does include a leveling tree as well. And then we're gonna go on to the end game version as well right there. We're going to start with the ascendancy points. Now the ascendancy points are exactly the same on both versions of the build. If you want to even take away some survivability from this build and put it into a fence, I can talk about that. But uh, this is definitely how I would go about it. So in order, these are the ascendancy points that I would take. First of all, we take Shaper of Flames. This is just gonna basically enable the build and allow us to very easily ignite our way through the entire leveling process with Armageddon Brand and Divine Ire. We then move to uh, both Liege of the Primordial for our uh, Cruel Lab and then Elemancer for our Merciless Lab. By this point, we're also going to be having our Golem Commander gives us four golems, just means we're basically going to be immortal through the rest of the leveling process as well. And then finishing off with Bastion of the Elements, or Bastion of Elements to end with. Now, a really good thing about Bastion of Elements is you cannot take reflected elemental damage, meaning that you, uh, once you get into mapping and everything like that, you really just don't need to worry about that map mod. If you do want uh, the Bastion of Elements first over Elemancer, those are basically the two ones that I would say you could probably choose between, uh, but uh, they're both needed in the end game, I would definitely say. You can remove either Bastion of Elements or Elemancer and go into Mastermind of Discord if you'd like to. As you can see here, it gives about a 17% more damage bonus to the build. Which, look, it is a lot, uh, but honestly, I wouldn't want to switch out either of these because uh, you will find yourself dying quite a lot if you do take one of these out. Now, the skill tree itself, uh, let's just go quickly through all of the uh, point version here. So as you start leveling, you're going to be leveling with something like Fireball, most likely. Uh, Fireball into Armageddon Brand. You're just coming out here and getting the essentials. You're getting your Elemental Overload, your Firewalker, and a bit of life, and maybe a Jewel Socket there as well. Going to 40 points, this is where you start picking up your Golem Jewels, maybe get another Jewel Socket here, and life, and some fire damage, and then picking up Elemental Equilibrium over there as well. Moving on to 60 points, uh, we want to be starting to pick up our uh, Endurance Charge and Overcharge, uh, basically, uh, a Power Charge I should say, basically gearing up and ready to start discharging once we hit around about the 80 points here. 80 points, we go all the way down, we take our Blood Magic and Mortal Conviction, we also take our Call to Arms, so we can instantly start war crying uh, and everything like that. Uh, and then lastly, the 100 points, well not lastly, almost lastly, we just pick up a little bit extra life around these zones and then finishing off at around about level uh, 90, uh, we have a finished tree here with the around about 1.6, 1.7 million uh, DPS right there on the budget version of the build. Uh, so the progression is fairly straightforward on this uh, on this build. As I said, you will just be leveling with Armageddon Brand and Divine Ire, and it's extremely easy to switch into those and out of them as well, because holy moly is this node right here, the Shaper of Flames, a pretty darn insane node. Uh, so that's the budget version. We're gonna switch right now to the end game tree. Let's go. The end game version of the tree follows the same skeleton, but you will notice obviously we've got to fit in some cluster jewels. So we have to take some points out of the tree to put them into those cluster jewel areas. So first of all, the first thing you'll notice is we have specked out of a little bit of damage of Breath of Flames and uh, the Divine Judgment over here, and also not instant war crying to be able to get a double cluster jewel set up over here. As you can see, we did talk about this earlier, but around about 20 million Ignite DPS does get pumped out of this build here. So there is a two cluster jewel version build and a one cluster jewel version build. As you can see here, you lose around about 25% of your damage. But if we have a look here at the life, we've got 6.7 and here we've got 5.7. So the one cluster jewel setup is a much more survivable setup and much more in line with hardcore. Uh, but the dual cluster setup is definitely a softcore version. And that's what I've gone for myself. I very much enjoy it. Uh, so there's a, just a couple of other things I will mention here. First of all, this jewel here, Transcendent Mind, this is a really good spot to actually put this jewel. It gives us close to 10% more damage, uh, which is really, really nice to give us that damage over time multiplier. We then also have uh, right down here as well, a Thread of Hope, a very large Thread of Hope, which is hitting uh, Inerexable to give us more armor and life regen with insurance charges and physical damage reduction. 
Uh, we pick up some life here, and we can also sneakily pick up Arsonist as well to give us some fire damage, damage over time, multi, and regen. But that's actually a pretty nice selection there. If you uh, still want to use your Warcries, you can actually take deep breaths right here, uh, which is really, really nice to take. And uh, another thing you can even fit into this build if you would like to is actually Infernal Cry. So actually taking deep breaths and going into Infernal Cry would give you even more damage. Just one more button to press, and I found that I didn't really want to press that uh, button much myself, so uh, I haven't gone into that. But it is very helpful if you do want to do that. That is pretty much the tree. There's no leveling tree down here because you should just use the budget version tree for that leveling if you would like to see all of that. Uh, but the last thing I will mention is a Watcher's Eye. The Watcher's Eye that I've socketed in is Damage Over Time Multiplier while affected by Malevolence. This is just giving us another around about, yeah, 7.6% damage right there. You can get a dual stat Malevolence with Damage Over Time Multiplier and uh, elements dealing damage faster. That's obviously pretty darn good. But this dual itself is already around about 16 Exalted Orbs, I think. Uh, might be a little less than that now. Uh, but uh, that's, I think, where I got it for. So that's the end game version of the tree. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. The last stuff that we're just going to talk about is actually leveling this build. So I'm going to go through all of the acts and talk about the gems you're going to be picking up and when you're going to be switching to Discharge. All right, let's jump over to that right now. Starting in Act 1 on this build, we're going to be leveling with Fireball and Flame Wall. Now, these two skills are going to be carrying us through to level 28 in Act 3, and I'll talk about everything that we should pick up uh, to give you the most damage that you possibly can. Now, while leveling, it's probably going to be good if you just use any sorts of weapons that have either, like, uh, damage to spells or plus levels to fire gems as well. All of that's going to be extremely helpful. Now, this is only one way of uh, deciding to level this character. You can do it however you would like to if you have a good way of leveling witches and elementalists. But this is what I like to do so we keep in the theme of the build. So we start with Fireball and uh, maybe pick up an Arcane Surge as well. And then when we get to uh, roundabout level uh, 8, I think it is, we can pick up Holy Flame Totem. We can pick up our Orb of Storms to start leveling it up as well and Flame Wall. So using Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wall and Fireball, Three different abilities there to really juice up the damage uh, and then you're going to be picking up combustion a little bit later you can even pick up either added cold or added lightning to just add some more hit damage uh, to your fireball if you'd like to uh, and then that is pretty much what you're going to be picking up in act one you can also pick up a vitality as well if you need a little bit of life as you are doing the leveling process and of course don't forget your movement skill as well flame dash so that's the very core of the build in Act 1. Let's move to Act 2 to give you a little bit more damage. In Act 2, we're just picking up a couple of abilities, as I said, just to give us a little bit more damage. So first of all, I like to pick up uh, anything like Herald of Ice or Herald of Thunder, but even Herald of Ash is actually pretty nice for Fireball. Uh, these are all just going to give you a little bit of on-hit damage, basically, because we're not quite fully Ignite just yet. Then we're also going to be picking up our Wave of Conviction, and we can run with Summon Skitterbots uh, is uh, basically what you're wanting to do. So either one of these three and a Summon Skitterbots together to reserve your mana uh, and then a Wave Conviction. By this point, you're probably going to notice that your mana is chunking quite a bit. So just make sure to keep your mana flasks up to date as you're doing so. Uh, now to link to everything else, you can also put the Deadly Elements on your Fireball to start doing some pretty big uh, Ignite damage right there. Or you can use Control Destruction uh, if you just want to do some more on-hit damage for a little bit. But I would recommend going into uh, Ignite Damage uh, right already and hitting that Deadly Ailments. Now, let's move to Act 3 and I'll talk about the Juice. Act 3 is where you're going to be getting your core leveling abilities as well as Discharge. Uh, which you're going to socket uh, alongside everything to start leveling that up. So first of all, we're looking at Flammability with our Curse. We're then going to be picking up our Malevolence, uh, wherever it is, uh, right over here, Malevolence. Uh, and uh, then we're also going to be picking up, as I said, our Discharge to start leveling that up. Picking up Divine Ire for single target. Once we get that first Labyrinth, we're going to use this for single target. And then Armageddon Brand for clear. Now, as you're leveling, uh, you can also pick up uh, some uh, Obliteration Wands. They are level 50 or so, but these are going to really help you level uh, with the exploding, uh, chaining and igniting and everything like that. Obliteration Wands are extremely strong. I think they're extremely cheap as well. 
Uh, so that's the core of what you're going to be picking up in Act 3. Let's just move to Act 4 just to talk about the last little uh, dregs. And finally, Act 4. Now remember, every gem that I haven't talked about here that's in the Path of Building, you can get in Act 6 by completing Lily Roth's quest, and then she has every single gem available for you to purchase there. But right here, we're going to be picking up all of our golems. So we've got Chaos Golem, Flame Golem, Stone Golem, and Lightning Golem, and you're going to be uh, using all of these. Uh, level them up, but the ones that I would say to use to begin with is probably going to be Stone Golem and Flame Golem. Third golem you use will be Chaos, and the fourth golem will be Lightning Golem. Uh, then we're going to be picking up a Hex Touch. Oh, not that one, sorry. Hex Touch to link to our Wave of Conviction. Uh, so Hex Touch, Wave of Conviction, and Flammability, and then put Combustion in there as well. Uh, and then uh, we're just going to be picking up, I think, Ignite Proliferation. Yep, there it is. And then things like Unbound Elements and Swift Affliction and everything like that, you're just going to be picking up in Act 6. Uh, to start doing some pretty insane damage with your Armageddon brand, and then moving into Discharge. So that's everything to do with leveling the build. I know it's a quick overview, uh, but I like to keep it short and succinct, and see if you can follow your way along through. Let me know what you think of the build. Uh, we're almost done, but I'm just going to jump to uh, the real me in a full screen, just to say goodbye to you all. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I know it's been a little bit uh, of a long time coming with this build guide, mainly because I was enjoying the build too much to actually take the time out of that playing the build to make the build guide. If you have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below or you can come catch me live at twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. Uh, we'll be playing this build a little bit longer and then trying to figure out what our next build is going to be. Um, maybe a minion build, maybe a deadeye build. I don't know, uh, I'll figure it out. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you want to hit that sub button down below, uh, you can definitely do so. It's free, cheap, well cheap is free, and super easy, and it really directly supports me in my content creation. Thank you so much. I hope I'm helping some of you newer players into the game as well. That's basically what I'm here to do, is really get as many new people into the game as I can. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, Badger, out.